Okay, cool. So, is it th th thumbs up from behind there? Can we start? Give me a thumbs up. Yeah? Okay, cool. So, hello everyone. My name is Mario Billing. Um, I'm from the, of course, uh, Wikipedia community, like all of us, um, but I'm also like a um, member of the FOSS Asia community. I'm mostly based in Asia and um, I work on the event EA system that we are using here at the event. It's an open source platform for event management. And uh, yeah, I'm very glad that you are here. So welcome very much to um, our session. So um, how uh, um, do we, can we um, organize this session? So my idea was this, that um, um, you're all using the system, you have um, a lot of feedback, you have questions. We only have 25 minutes, but maybe we can collect some feedback. And um, I have prepared some uh, sticky notes. So my idea was this, that um, we use these sticky notes and um, uh, write on one note what I really liked, what, I, what was great about uh, the... Um, yeah, event platform this year and one other uh, paper about um, what would I like to see um, getting improved or is there a feature that I like to see for the future or any changes I would like to see. So could, um, could you help me to um, give everyone here like a few post-its and I also have like some pens and while you're writing down your um, while you're writing down your Notes, yeah, um, and um, I can already tell you a little bit about um, the history of the project. And uh, after that, we all come here in front and we stick it on the wall and then we can see uh, the two different areas. So what's really great about it and where would I like to see things improved? So just like make two different post-its uh, for, for each. And yeah, who doesn't have the post-it notes? He will, he's still handing them out. And I, I just like um, continue a bit uh, to talk about it while you guys can uh, hopefully multitask, right? You can think about it at the same time and also listen a bit to what I have to say. Cool. So basically, what's the background um, of um, the project? Um, in 2009, um, we organized the GNOME Asia Summit in um, Vietnam. And uh, back then we uh, needed a system, so we had this Drupal project and we made a simple uh, website using Drupal for um, signing up attendees. And the project was so cool um, and we had so many attendees at the GNOME Asia Summit back in the days that we said, hey, we want to continue this and we really love free and open source software. We also love uh, free and open source hardware, so FOSS, free and open source solutions, or however you want to name it. And um, yeah, so let's continue this. And uh, we continued it And uh, 2010 and 11, So many people joined again and came from all over the world. And uh, um, we were looking for an event system to facilitate this, yeah, speakers and so on. And um, um, we didn't find anything. So 2014, we decided to make our own platform. Back then we were using AmberJS and so on. And uh, um, yeah, it went quite well for a few years. Um, unfortunately, we had some challenges with the team. You all know there was Corona and unfortunately our lead developer, he passed away in Corona in India. Um, and uh, there was this problem with oxygen, um, uh, wasn't delivered and so on. So it was a really blow for us and also, um, of course, for the project, there are some memorial videos online about it. So yeah memory of Arib Jamal. It was a challenge for the project, um, but we still had a lot of interest and um, then like there were other events. So we kind of kept the project going, but there was a technical debt. And I, I would like to know uh, who are developers here in this room who are uh, like on the technical side of things also. Yeah, so you are... Uh, Maybe you can also in the break explain to the others a bit like uh, technical debt is really a challenge because you have maybe some modules you can't upgrade and other modules that require a new upgrade to a new version and so on. And it's all like dependent and so on. So it was a bit difficult to maintain the system. So last year we said like, let's continue, take whatever we can and you find other open source components online. Um, for example, like uh, this Pretix project or Pretalks and so on, like look around what we can use and uh, combine this with our own expertise and our own um, modules and code. So this is what we did and what we started last year. And um, we have um, some outcome and we're also channeling back updates to the um, uh, related projects that we are using. Um, 
And yeah, that's where we are now and love to get your feedbacks. So you had a short moment time. I see some people already wrote something down. So I would like uh, you to come here in front and uh, just stick it on your wall. Uh, stick it on this wall, I mean. So please, here, stick on what um, uh, is uh, um, really uh, um, good, like what, what you really like. And here, please, what are the challenges you found so far in the Eventia platform, yeah? So please, feel free to come in front here, stick it on, then we can go through it step by step. Okay, I see people still writing, yeah. <laughs> you still need a moment longer. Okay, no problem, no problem. Yeah, so, um, I mean, that's that's the history of it. Maybe I can quickly mention a little bit about Force Asia then, while uh, some people still think about it. So, Force Asia um, is not just um, an annual event. Um, it's also like a free and open source community online. On GitHub, there are more than 200 repositories. The thing is, you meet at events, just like... The Wikipedians here, and then you have an idea for a new project. And some projects, it's difficult to make them really move forward, but other projects take off. And that's what happens in the Force Asia community. So, for example, one project that we're also doing is um, this one here. It's the Pocket Science Lab. It's a hardware. And another project is, for example, here, this batch. It's also open hardware now, and we have a software app on it. If you want, you can come in the break and try it out. Here's also Ario from our community uh, in Indonesia, and uh, he can also help you and answer any questions. Cool, so I see people already come, so please feel free whenever you're ready, come to the front and um, stick it on the wall, and we can go uh, uh, through some of the question questions here. Yeah, so... So where is the where is the line? So on the left, it's more like what I like. So, so I'm gonna re read this out. Okay. So here is, for example, love the calendar interface. Um, who wrote this? Yeah. Okay. You wrote it. Okay. You want to quickly say what, what's good about it and um, yeah. Oh, the uh, calendar interface is like really responsive and it gives a good like high level overview of like where I am to go at what time. Yeah. Okay, cool. Thank you very much. And then, um, so how about we read one positive and one challenge? Yeah, is that good? Okay, cool. So um, here somebody wrote, Did, didn't know events were clickable at first. Um, yeah, who, who wrote that? Yeah, ah, same person. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and yeah. you didn't realize it was the same handwriting? <laughs> Yeah, but um, yeah, I didn't know we could like click on an event to get more details. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah but is there anything that you think we could improve um, from the interface, or is just like um, once you know and you share it with others, and then you kind of know? Or, or yeah, I think it's just kind of known. <laughs> yeah, I mean, in the in the old days, everything was blue. Maybe the young people don't even remember, yeah? When you had the links, they were always in blue. So now, nowadays you can click on kind of everything, uh, but like sometimes you cannot, and then you're also confused. So you just need to get into the habit and, and to understand it, I guess, yeah? Or maybe it'd be uh, an idea would be that rather than bring you to a new page, it brings you to a pop-up of yeah. like the event. So it, you, yeah. you, you stay on the calendar, and it's a more like modern style. Yeah, so modern style, there could be a small pop-up maybe with a more link or something like that. Yeah. Sounds good. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Thank you very much. And there's a feedback. Uh, could you pass on the microphone, please, to the next uh, person? Thank you very much. Yeah, in, in this specific matter, I think that in the desktop version, it's pretty clear that it's clickable because yeah. you have an over effect with the mouse and it turns blue and the thing it's in the mobile. So I would suggest just a learn more button in the in the bottom corner or uh, you you begin the abstract and you have the like the three dots to continue reading and leads the person to click. So yeah. Just so so a little bit more interactive. Um I know that uh, people are watching these sessions online so um I'm I'm not sure is the camera like can the camera see us yeah? Is, is it like on, on big screen? Because I know like sometimes the people online complain that they can't see what's going on and they, they just uh, see because it's, I see it's a bit pointing. 
here, yeah. So, um, uh, so if anyone's looking online, please also take the questions from online then a bit later, yeah. 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 Okay. No problem. Cool. Thank you. Um, then let's move to the next one. Would you like to read out what you have written here? So, so for me, like I had to click the star, the favorite, on 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 my mobile. So I like open the new link again and again. Yeah, that might. So so um so it's a bit overlap or something. So the star starring your own session um is a challenge. Okay, cool. Thank you very much. Um yeah, what's the next? Um let me read. Um more mobile friendliness, text adjustments, export to PDF and printable um options. Um okay, yeah. That's that's a good idea. Export to PDF. Um, I mean, some browsers have the um, save as PDF option, but maybe the format is not um, correct. It's maybe off page or something like that. It is. So that's, it is. Yeah. I was trying to ah, okay. to print it out, so yeah. I I know it's not environmental friendly, but I didn't have the time to look at the the whole program, and yeah. I was planning to print it and watch it on the plane, so. But I, I did print it, but the letters were so small, so small that yeah. I couldn't read it. Okay. So and the mobile uh, when it doesn't have the um, it's just an application for the web, right? It doesn't have an app for Android or iOS, right? No. Yeah. Okay. So app, yeah. the thing I found out is whenever I, I made the link to my mobile phone to be more quick. To, to access, and the first time I load the page, uh, it's it's not formatted for yeah. Um, mobile. Yeah. Okay. So um, of course, like the challenge for us is maybe some people tested it, but the wiki mania schedule is just huge, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, that's, that's so a problem. maybe like it wasn't tested like that, and uh, um, now we we have it here, and yeah. Um, Okay, so that's something we need to look in more. Thank you very much. Um, then another thing is here, can improve. Differences between desktop and mobile versions. Um, I think that was similar to um, the previous comment or does anyone want to say a little bit more about it? Yeah, can, do you have the microphone? No, one spe specific thing that I, I don't understand why in the mobile version we can see how many people like the event and are uh, uh, thinking about attending. And in the desktop, we don't have this feature. And once I'm giving a talk in, in Friday, <laughs> I always get into the, the, the mobile versions instead of the desktop version. And I would prefer to have everything everywhere. Yeah, so actually in the desktop version, there is this link uh, schedule and then sessions. So if you click on the sessions, you will still, um, in the in the desktop version, you will still see the um, number of um, like people who signed up for the session or who fa who start the session. Um, maybe some people might say, huh, but I saw that before, uh, I'm, I'm confused because actually two weeks ago, we also had it um, on the schedule in the desktop version, but then some users' feedback was, Oh, that's too much. That's overloading, and they don't want to have this uh, the kind of competition. So our current idea is this: that we want to make a small button to enable people to switch that feature on and off. So for some people it might be too much, and others. Um, another thing that we are um, uh, working on is um, that you can sort the sessions by popularity. Yeah, but like it's it's a bit tricky because some events they say, oh yeah, really good because we want to see and maybe change the plan or whatever. Um, other events say, oh, we don't want to have this kind of competition. Yeah. Well, yeah, different approaches, yeah? So if you can s uh, switch it on and off, I think everyone would be satisfied. Thank you very much for that feedback. Then we have here um, a comment, I didn't know events were clear. I oh, know that uh, I already had. Do you uh, use Pretux? Yeah, of course, like who asked, there's a doubt here. So uh, that's what I said before. So we are using different components, but um, um, 
there is uh, unfortunately uh, sometimes a challenge um, because uh, of different licenses and the uh, Wikipedia community knows uh, very well like always the challenge with licenses yeah so for example like um, if you use an Apache license um, then um, the um, AGPL for example is not compatible with the license and so on that's why for example um, the t ticketing system is also like um, a kind of um, shared component with some older code of like pre takes and, and, and so on. Yeah? So there's always some overlap with other projects, but we cannot always combine everything, unfortunately, because of the um, license um, challenges here. And um, what we do is like, nevertheless, we use the code that we can, and then we add our own features, for example, like the um, filtering features um, in the schedule um, that you already see, and then we uh, push it up upstream. Yeah, so it's kind of an upstream uh, project, but I think the um, the vision, and I think we can talk a little bit later about this. Um, the vision that we have is is a bit different. We want to have a system that can be easily deployed by many events and many projects themselves, and that already comes with everything included: ticketing, um, speaking, and video all together and there are other projects that say okay we only want to focus on ticketing or we only want to focus on that and our vision is more like everything together because the force asia community um we need it ourselves yeah and for example we have next year um also an event in thailand and that's that's in march and expect a lot of people so this is what we need all these features and uh, somebody raised the hand yeah okay thank you that was my doubt uh, I'm organizing an event also using Pretox, and you're struggling with some features. That's why <laughs> I asked you. So I'd like to talk to you later because maybe you have faced the same, uh, same problems as us are facing now. And we are looking for a community to, to help us in, in, in that mission. Yeah. That's it. Exactly. So that, that would be great, um, for example. Um, it, uh, so we have a very active community. Um, Today we had uh, five deployments, so I don't know who logged in in the morning. Maybe logged in later again and saw, oh, this issue is solved, or right. So actually, we are very active and we're looking for events that we can work together with. So, for example, if you're already using Pretox, you could, for example, use our project and upgrade your project with this. We can show you how to do this. Yeah. So because of the shared code base. Yeah. Um, okay. Cool. So then here, next question: Text doesn't wrap on my browser. Fennec on Android. Who? Yes. Okay. Would you like to share a little bit more details about it? Yeah, that's that's as simple as uh, as it shows. Just uh, I can see all the events events, but I cannot uh, see all the text. I have to uh, snap this way and and around. Yeah. So, it's so not not very practical. So uh, um, could you maybe not everyone knows about the Fennec browser? Um, yeah. Oh, it's a, it's a, a, a pro pro probably some fork of uh, of Firefox on Android because of license issues. Yeah, when was it forked? Oh, some some time ago. It's uh, it looks like uh, like uh, the most Firefox you can get on Android. Yeah, so um, I think uh, what we need to do here is we need to add um, uh, the Fennec browser to our testing um, process. And um, I don't know which HTML engine um, they're using, um, Gecko, I guess, uh, if it's older and um, which version. So definitely something to test. So thank you very much for bringing it up. Yeah, okay. Um, then um, uh, let me move on. One challenge, have a desi designated column slash space for favorite events, keep track of the stars, maybe, or of the love. There's a heart. Very positive, very nice. Uh, uh, who, who wrote that? Yeah? OK. Would you like to share? Hi, thank you. So first of all, I really like the interface. I think it's an amazing tool. I think it just encounters some issues with respect to um, parts of the event where you've got no longer a block schedule of all the events happening all at once. And so, especially in the late afternoon when you have um, some events that overlap over others, it's hard to keep track of, say, what events I've already committed to and what events I'm trying to also um, add to my own personal schedule. And so if there's a way where there could be like a designated tab 
or in the same screen, a designated space to keep track of all the events that you are committed to going, then it would be really easy just to look on your phone or look on your computer um, just to keep track of everything, everything that you like. And one other idea that just came to mind is perhaps there's a way to export all the events that you want to attend. This could be for your own like personal like archives or if you want to share with peers what you're interested in. Um, that could be a really cool feature, but I also don't think it's absolutely necessary. It's just another fun, fun add-on that could be intriguing. Yeah. Thank you. So, yeah, I, but this is like what um, a lot of users want. And um, um, we already have the feature where you can click on the stars and only see your start sessions. Yeah, so there on the top there is a there is a yell, yellow star. So if you star, have some stars and it shows a number, for example, four or ten, how many, um, depends on how many sessions you start, then you will only see the start sessions. But uh, maybe you can... Check this out and show me later if it's not clear enough because if you have an idea about tabs and so on. Maybe you can even draw it because I'm, I'm not entirely sure how, how I would implement that. Um, in regards to the export, um, there was already an export, but the user feedback was that it wasn't very clear. So this morning um, we uh, implemented a button which says add to calendar. So may maybe you check this out and there is already an iCal export and if you uh, uh, see the second section, there is an my start iCal. Yeah? So my your own schedule. So it only exports your own schedule. However, we live in a world where not everything is open source. And there's, of course, Google Calendar. Many people use it. So the next step would be um, to also add uh, the feature there so you can add it directly to Google Calendar. Because what this export doesn't do, if you update your favorite um, um, sessions, it will not update the exported calendar, right? And with a Google calendar, that's of course possible because it's all online. Yeah? So, I don't know. Maybe we have it even before the end of the event. Let's keep the <laughs> fingers crossed, yeah? So, people are working on it. Cool. Thank you very much for that uh, thing. And here I see um, another feedback. A place to take notes during session, during a session. Yeah? Okay. You want to um, hand the microphone here, please? Yeah. So first of all, thank you for your work on this um, on this platform. I put that as just because as I was attending sessions today, I didn't have one place to put notes, and I thought it would be nice if there was a place within the platform, within each session, that we could put notes and then download everything at the end of the event, for example, into one doc. So probably not high priority, but a nice suggestion. And I also, I don't know if you'll get my note there, but I just wanted to... Um, to mention specifically the feature to put feedback for the speakers. I think that's a very nice uh, feature. I found that today and yeah, I really yeah. like that. Yeah, thank you. And um, uh, regarding your suggestion, um, sorry, may I ask a, a question? Um, what tool do you use, usually use to take notes? Like what is a good tool? Because there are so many different tools and they have different approaches. So what are you that's usually using? I usually use Google Docs, but uh, I don't have a preference for that. Yeah, so yeah, that would um, require some thought on our side. So, for example, if you integrate, like, for example, Google Docs or like Nextcloud, yeah, um, LibreOffice, where there's not just one online LibreOffice um, uh, version. So, um, yeah, some, some thoughts need to go into this. So, we can take it up as a request, even though we don't know immediately how to implement it. Yeah. Okay. I do have a question about the before you read my note. Uh, the iCal, because I tried to download it, and even when I downloaded the first iCal, it downloaded only my favorites. Is it supposed to download all yeah. of the sessions or only okay. my favorites? So the feature was just implemented. Please come to me after the session. We try together. Okay. I don't know if it's a bug or if uh, maybe uh, if you click somewhere. So, yeah? Okay. okay we I tried together. Yesterday, maybe. Okay. okay, cool. Thank you. Yes. Um, yeah. Sorry, I joined a bit late, so I don't know if you already discussed this, but have you thought about making an app for the mobile version of this thing? Because what I'm listening is that a lot of issues are browser versus app. And this reminds me, I've been in many international conferences, especially like science-related, where there are like million sessions like now, all 
things happening at once. And we usually have like an app for the event where we see the calendar, we add it to ourselves, and most of them include a notes section, which is amazing because you attend the notes and then maybe a week later, my boss asks me like, oh, which lectures do you find interesting? What did you like? And I'm like, oh, it's easier to go back into the app, see what lectures I attended because I've marked as favorites and then just see my notes that I take it there as Apple Notes or Google Notes or whatever, just like a quick and dirty kind of thing. Um, so I don't know if you've thought about making like a mobile version rather than just be browsing on it. Yeah, um, thank you. And so these are two questions. So one is the app and one is also related to your note taking. So um, actually I always get mixed feedback about an app because people say, oh, not another app for another event. Yeah. Uh, so on the other hand, you, you, you store the data there and yeah, how, how, go, how often do you go back? I mean, what would be the easiest is to make a web app that is kind of based on the web um, interface at the moment um, things are still changing so much so if we have an app and if we change things on every platform we're just busy like having small changes and like taking care of so many things so i think an app is definitely possible and um, we're also looking of course more and more to use ai so if you already have like one version like you know it's uh, development can be sped up um, but i would like to know um just like to understand uh, the feedback here in the room how many people would really value to have a mobile app yeah please raise your hand just to get an get an idea a bit okay yeah half half okay i see so yeah say again yeah programs like uh, yeah, uh, for example, maybe more technical contributors uh, here love the Giggity, that it's a, a yeah. small application that opens whatever other similar event. Uh, and uh, so I, I have, I'm offline mode in my mobile phone and I just browse the, the whole event and um, it works, I like it. So maybe um, yeah. it, there is some space to just improve uh, this kind of uh, applications. Uh, to make it uh, more, to make them more user friendly, or or have more defaults for next Wikimania's or this yeah. kind of things. Or Th thank you. And uh, I, I'm actually seeing we're at the end of the time, and I still feel we have so many questions. <laughs> so, um, um, so absolutely right. Uh, so um, we will maybe make this more prominent uh, um, at the next upcoming events, and also check and, and promote the open source apps that we are compatible with, like Gigiti. Um, and um, yeah, so many topics still to talk about. Thank you very much for the notes. So we have more uh, ideas here, um, even if you didn't have the chance now to share your thoughts and. Um, yeah, I'm still around. Um, Ario is also here and our community is on GitHub and everywhere. You can always uh, uh, get in touch with us. Please come to the FOSS Asia Summit. It happens on um, uh, in March next year. We are invited by the Thai Parliament. It will happen inside the Thai Parliament. Maybe an opportunity for the Wikipedia community in future. And um, yeah, thank you very much for joining um, the call and using the system, providing all the feedback and support for the free and open source community. Thank you very much.